Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins... Here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this program. As proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Time was when stories about the armed services seem mostly to contain tales about bad boys faced with endless bushels of unpeeled potatoes. Times have changed, for today's stories are those of jobs well done, and in this instance, how the Air Force rewarded devotion to duty with an honor flight. Our first act curtain in just one moment. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you may realize. Yes, indeed, the United States Air Force has a prior service program that offers big benefits to veterans of all the armed services. Right now, the Air Force needs men who are experienced in a critical skill required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, then the Air Force wants you, and they'll make it worth your while. So for full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask him for the free folder for prior servicemen. This folder will show you how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Remember, you've earned credits toward a fine retirement while in the service. So you protect your initial investment. Return to the service as an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Now the proudly we held production, Honor Flight. <laughs> This is the story of three of your airmen, all stationed at a large air base along the eastern seaboard of the United States. Airman number one is named Ron Harvey. He's a tall, bespectacled young man who hails from Cincinnati, Ohio. If you're a pilot at Matson Air Force Base, which is where these three young men are stationed, you most certainly know Ron, or at least you know Ron's voice. Air Force Jet 5889. Roger. We have your position. Approaching glide path, three miles. Make final cockpit check. Maintain altitude of 1,100, heading 310. Do not acknowledge any further transmissions unless unable to comply. If you do not hear GCA for any five-second interval, climb to 1,000. That is Ron Hart. Airman number two is a fellow by the name of Dick Allen. He's a nice boy, Dick. Steady, reliable, wants to make the Air Force his career. One thing, though, stands in his way, a place in America called Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I will explain later. Dick works in an office at Matson, and he works hard. Colonel Watson's office, Airman Allen speaking. Oh, yes, sir, the reports are all finished. They're on your desk waiting to be signed. <laughs> no, sir, I finished them up last night. Oh, it was no trouble, sir. I enjoyed doing it. Well, besides, I didn't have a date or anything. No, no, there just aren't a lot of places to go around here anyway. It's not like Sioux Falls, sir. No, Sioux Falls, sir, that's my hometown. That is Dick Allen. The third airman is a young man named Rocco Falucci. Ah, <laughs> this is a fine young man. He has eyes that could see in the night, and if he did not tell me otherwise, I would swear he has Castilian blood in his veins. Uh, he comes from San Francisco, a fine old Spanish city. Hey, Pellucci. Get off the intercom, Wilson. No kidding, Pellucci. I'm serious. The pilot of the tow plane says you got to keep your mouth closed. Those TVUs are blind and we can't get on course. If you're trying to rattle me, Wilson, you're not succeeding, so just knock it off. All right, Paisano. Stand by to open fire. Let him have it, Pellucci. Attaboy, Pellucci. You got the sleeve on the first burst. You're the best gunner in the Air Force. I'm a monkey's uncle. Yeah, I don't care to discuss your ancestry, Wilson, but I accept your tribute modestly. And that is Rocco Falucci. 
Well, by now I'm sure I have you thoroughly confused, and it's long past time to unconfuse, shall we say. I am Senor Carlos Montaldo, manager of the Hotel Internacional at Veradero Beach, a few miles drive from Havana, Cuba. Now, how do I, who am related to a long line of Spanish grandees, come to Matson Air Force Base and these three young men? Well, uh, put it this way. The three young men came to me. Uh, but let's go back. Second class, Ronald Harvey. Airman first class, Richard Allen. Airman second class, Rocco Fallucci. Congratulations. You have been selected as this month's honor flight at Matson. As you know, you have been chosen after being graded on efficiency, military bearing, conduct, and devotion to duty. There are over 2,000 men on this base, and you three have excelled. Now... It has always been said that duty is its own reward. And we in the Air Force have always believed that. But added incentive has never done anyone any harm. So we've arranged to fly the three of you to Havana for one week's leave. There we've made reservations for you at one of the finest hotels on Veradero Beach. Let your accomplishment be shared by all of us here at Matson by having a whale of a time. Enjoy yourselves. You've earned it. Well, gentlemen, I don't think it's necessary to repeat my words on the drill field. The manager of a hotel is a personal friend of mine. I think you should have a really fine week. I'm sure we will, sir. Oh, incidentally, where's your third man? Uh, Alan, isn't it? He should be here, sir. Well, the plane will be pulling out in a moment. We can't wait too much longer. Now, I must say that this boy doesn't seem very anxious to go if he can't arrange to be on time for the plane. Oh, here he comes now, sir. Oh, fine, fine. Well, you best be moving along. Let's go, Alan. I'll be going without you. Uh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, sir. That's all right, son. Just as long as you made it. Good luck to all of you. You better fasten your safety belts, guys. Hey, you've been in the Air Force long enough to know you don't keep colonels waiting. All right, now, don't rub it in. Gee, you sure don't sound very enthusiastic for a guy who's about to leave on a week's vacation. Well, I'm not. I don't get it. You certainly must have worked hard enough to earn this thing. I thought I'd be going home for a week to Sioux Falls. Uh, you'll pardon my being so inquisitive, but uh, what's special about Sioux Falls? I don't know. I've thought about it many times, and for the life of me, I just don't know. I guess it's just because it's a place I grew up in where I know all the people. How much longer do you have to serve? Oh, it's not that either. I, I like the Air Force. I'm hoping to make it my career. Well, then you better get Sioux Falls out of your system. The Air Force is going to take you a long way away from here. By the time you're through with 30 years. Yeah, I know that too. Well, look, this is a good time to start. There's nothing where we're going that has even the slightest resemblance to South Dakota. Hold on, men. Here we go to the land of hot cha and blue cha cha. <laughs> This is where I come into the story. As I told you before, I am Senor Carlos Montaldo, the manager of the Hotel Internacional at Veradero Beach. It is a fine hotel. In fact, Colonel Wilson, the commandant of the Madsen Air Force Base, spent his honeymoon here. It is a real credit to our establishment that his memories are still pleasant ones. And so, I met the three young airmen. Senores, it is a great pleasure to welcome you to Cuba. Well, so help me, it was worth it. Every hour I spent on extra duty homing those jets was really worth it. What a place. Oh, I'll never miss another target, so help me. Well, I am delighted you are pleased. Uh, uh, and you, senor, something is wrong? Hmm? Oh, no. No, nothing's wrong. Well, with your permission, I have made some plans for you. Since you are to be here only a week, I thought it best. Are those the type of plans I think they are, or do my ears deceive me? Uh, that uh, gleam in senor Montaldo's eye means that he's not discussing what's on the menu for lunch. Uh, uh, ah. Just a word of warning, senores. The young ladies I introduced you to are from our finest homes. They've led sheltered lives compared to your American girls. Uh, I trust in your courtliness and uh, scrupulous behavior. Oh, sir, you are describing my attitude in these situations to a T. Fine. Then I'll expect you in the main ballroom at 7. That should give you plenty of time to change. Uh, adios, senores. Adios, adios senor. Adios. Boy, what a spot. 
What a wonderful spot. Hey, hey, take a look yeah. out this window. Miles and miles of beautiful white sand and blue, blue ocean. Oh, hey, come on, Dick, take a look. I saw it when we came in. Hey, what's eating you? Forget it, Rocco. Well, he's been this way ever since we left the base. Oh, this is really a sour grapes character we've drawn as a traveling companion. Our friend and compatriot here has Sioux Falls itis. <laughs> you mean he's homesick? Yeah. I don't get it. Look, you've been in the Air Force for over two years. You're a case for the medics. Well, it's not homesickness exactly. It's it's different. What do you mean different? I don't know. I just can't seem to shake it. I uh, think you should have mentioned this to the colonel. Maybe they'd have uh, picked someone else who would have appreciated the trip. Well, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. He was so enthusiastic about our going. Well, of course he was. Look, we all worked hard for this trip. And the colonel knew that our coming here would spark higher performances from the other 2,000 guys at Matson trying to get on the honor flight next month. Rocco's right. When the colonel finds out that you didn't enjoy yourself, his whole morale program will go to pot. Well, now, look, why don't you guys go ahead and enjoy yourselves? I won't say anything when I get back except that I had a swell time. Oh, listen to the way he says it, just like he's swallowing castor oil. Swell time. Disgusting, oh. isn't it? Well, it looks like it's up to us to see that you have a good time, whether you like it or not. Words of wisdom, Rocco, my Thank boy. You. Come on, we better get going if we're going to be downstairs by seven. Well, look, fellas, why don't I just stay in the room and read a book or something? Read a book. Hey, this is worse than I thought. Oh. No, fellas, I'm not kidding. Why don't you go ahead without me? Will you sit on him or shall I? My normally I... placid nature is rebelling at all this. I consider it my duty to see that you have a good time. Yeah. All right, all right. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll go along. But I can guarantee you that I won't have a good time. <laughs> Americans are all alike. It is the idea to talk as fast as you can and say absolutely nothing. Well, that's what we call sweet talk, baby. I am not a baby. And why do you insist on calling me so? Hey, any idea what you'd like to have me call you? Uh, uh, you may call me Teresa. That's my name. Senor Rocco, when mm. a gentleman dances the rumba, it is not necessary to swing the hips so. So... So, <laughs> look, baby, shall we sit this one out and call it a total loss? As you desire, senor. Mm. I only wish that you had the manners of your friend Dick. Senorita, I've got manners I've never even used yet. Before we go, senor, answer me one question. Sure, sure. Go ahead, baby, go ahead. Is there such a place in the United States as Sioux Falls, South Dakota? <laughs> Look, look, I, I don't care if you don't speak a word of English. All you have to do is look at me with those big brown eyes. Si, senor. And, and, and you dance. You dance like an angel. And with an angel, language is no better. Si, senor. Oh, look, Carl, I've known you now for over two hours. I've done nothing but listen to si, senor. Don't you think it might be possible for me to teach you a few words of English? Si, senor. I know English. Well, if you know English, Carla, why don't you say so? Say something to me. Say something in English. Sue Falls. Oh, this is driving me crazy if I hear Sue Falls just once more. I'm getting it, too, so don't complain. How did we ever get mixed up with this guy, Alan? You were the top man in your squadron, don't you remember? How can I ever forget Incidentally, where did he go? I don't know, and who cares? Yeah. <laughs> here, here they come. Don't say anything. There may still be some hope left. Uh, try and change the subject. Talk about a uh, punk, a city, oh, or sock God. center. Huh? No, estamos lista. Ven acá. Oh, I, I didn't realize it was so late, senores. It is much past the time that Carla and I must be leaving. Leaving? But it's only 10 o'clock. Oh, know. there is always tomorrow, senor. Yeah, but... It was so interesting hearing about your country. Uh, you'll say goodbye to Senor Dick for us. Uh, that we oh. will. Uh, do you want us to see him? Oh, oh, yes. No, no, no. Can it we... will not be necessary. Mm. Senor Montaldo has graciously offered us the use of his car. Mm. Adios, Senor Ron. Uh, adios, Carla. Adios, America. Well, there they go. That was a very quick evening. Cuba. 
the country of rhythm and romance. Oh, come on. We might as well go get some sleep. Boy, I think our pal Alan has really got the beat on this Cuba route. Oh, I think we're really going to have a swell time here, don't you, Ronald? Now, wait, hold it. Here comes little boy Blue. What's the matter now? He looks like he's seen a ghost. Hey, fellas, stop. I can't believe it. It's impossible. I must be seeing things going out of my mind. I could have told you that. Well, what's happened now? I've just seen her here in the hotel. I can't believe it. Will you stop talking in circles? Who have you seen? Jane Lewis. She's here. I saw her. Wait, don't tell us. Uh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Not Jane Lewis from Sioux Falls. Not Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Now, how did you two fellas ever guess that? Ooh. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Honor Flight, and we will return in just one moment for the second act. When you make an investment, you want it to pay off, right? Well, men, how about those years you invested in the armed forces, learning skills, gaining experience valuable to yourself and your country? You can make those years pay off in huge dividends today by returning to the armed forces as a member of the United States Air Force. Yes, if you've been in any of the armed services then you may be eligible to enlist in the United States Air Force in a gray that'll be a real pleasant surprise. You see, right now, the Air Force needs men skilled in certain important fields, and you may be just such a man. If so, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your previous service experience to work to your best advantage and to collect on those credits you've earned toward a well-paying retirement. Your Air Force recruiter has a free folder that will give you full details. So you write or visit him now. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. And remember, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now your United States Air Force presents the second act of Honor Flight. Veradero Beach is on the north coast of Cuba, on a narrow peninsula jutting out into the Atlantic Ocean. The crystal clear water sweeps lazily up into the powder-fine white sand. A refreshingly cool breeze constantly air conditions the peninsula. It's a lovely spot to visit. And my hotel, the Internacional, is one of its more elegant places. It would be difficult not to have a good time at Veradero Beach. Yet, three American airmen are doing just that. Not having a good time. Uh, let's call the whole thing off. Huh? Well, I didn't go back to the base before the week is out. You're mad. We'd never hear the end of it. Why, man, this is prize duty we've got. At least that's what I keep telling myself. In bed every night by ten and rooming with a madman. I tell you, I saw her. It was Jane Lewis. Look, do we have to stay here at Varadero? I think if we went into Havana, maybe Look, we the could... the colonel would be very hurt. This is where he spent his honeymoon. No, we're supposed to have a good time here. Hey, are either of you two guys listening to me? Who's he? Hmm? Now, seriously, guys, it was Jane. She was with these, uh, two other girls. Hold it. Hold it. For the first time, this is beginning to sound interesting. You say she was with some other girls, American girls? I don't know. They were gone before I could get a chance to talk to them, but it was Jane Lewis. All right, granted. Now, I take it you have pretty good eyesight, considering your acceptance by this honorable and august body that employed our services. You wouldn't give us a bum steer, would you, Richard? Oh, Ronald, old chap, you anticipate my every question. Now, if our friend here answers in the affirmative, there may still be hope that this junket will turn out to be a success. Golly, you two certainly do talk funny at times. There were other girls, pretty girls, if that's what you mean. Say no more, I'm convinced. Where do we start looking? Well, I would think that the obvious thing to do would be to call the desk and ask if they are registered here in the hotel. There, I told you he was a genius. Hello, uh, this is room 714. Can I have the desk, please? Oh, ha, ha, hello. Uh, can you tell me if there's some American girls registered here? One of them is named Jane Lewis. There are none. You sure? No one of that name. Uh, none. None at all? There you are. Uh, yeah, where do we go from here? There are only about 200 different hotels and rooming houses here on the beach. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Say you called or visited every hotel on the beach? Every one. I've even learned Spanish in the process. We had hoped to locate them. Do you have any suggestions? Well, was there something wrong with the young ladies I introduced you to? Oh, no, no, senor, nothing at all. It's, it's just that 
Well, uh, Mine couldn't speak any English. <laughs> well, there is a universal language, senor. Uh, senor, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, you know how we happen to be here in Cuba. Well, of course, the senor coronel has... Uh... It's, it's more than that, sir, much more. Well, the Air Force seemed to think we gave that little extra something, and they rewarded us for it. Now, it's up to us to enjoy ourselves, come heaven or high water. And uh, going to bed each night at 10 o'clock does not come under the heading of enjoyment. Oh, senor, you are so right. Now, if we could find these three girls from Sioux Falls, we think maybe we could make everything come out all right. Senor, do you, do you think you can help us? Well, I sympathize with you, senores, but it is a big country, Cuba. And these young ladies could be in many places. Uh, if you called all the hotels and the rooming houses... Uh, they were probably at Veradero only for the day. Uh, this is quite frequently done when people drive down from Havana. Well, where shall we start then, Havana? Oh, I don't know. You know, somehow or other, this all sounds nuts to me. Chasing across a country we hardly know, looking for some girls we've never seen, or living in a place we don't know about. Oh, gee. <laughs> Well, the policeman said that he saw three girls just fitting the description who were living here. Yeah, but he said they're artists traveling around with paints and brushes and stuff like that. That don't sound like Jane. Well, we should check them out anyway. Go ahead, Mark. Huh? Senor. Oh, boy. Go ahead, Ron. Well, uh, we're looking for three American girls. Ah, uh, yes, senor. The three young ladies. Uh, but they have gone back to Los Estados Unidos. That finishes that. Uh, you'll excuse me, senor, but was one of these girls named Jane? Jane Lewis? Let me think. Uh, no, senor, no. There was no Jane Lewis. Of that, I am positive. Oh, what are you wasting your time for? You're not even sure it was her that you saw in the first place. Why don't we forget the whole business? Ah, oh, come on, Ron. We've gone this far. Let's keep trying. Uh, thank you, senor. Thanks for your trouble. <laughs> But the hotel register said there was a Jane Lewis registered there. And the clerk said that the young ladies were planning on attending the bullfight, then head back to Havana. All right, we're here. We might as well look. But you know me, I can't stand the sight of blood. Hey, hey, look at that. Ooh, that Torito handles that bull like a jet running in on a low straight. How close can you get? I'm glad we didn't come in at the beginning of this. Yeah, but couldn't we have gotten tickets on the shady side of the arena? This is hotter than blazes here in the sun. Hey, Rocco. Hmm? Hey, Ron, it's them. Yeah, there what? in the first row of boxes right across the arena. Ah, sun's got you. I don't see anything. Hey, Rocco, use those gunner's eyes of yours. You see anything even vaguely resembling three American girls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three dolls sitting right over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see them. Oh, oh boy, this was worth waiting for. Let's go. Come on. What happened? He's killed the ball. Well, come oh. on, come on. Let's go before it crowds up and we lose him. Come on, oh. come on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse senor. Me. Oh, it's too late. We'll never get him all the way over on the other side of the Excuse stadium. Me, hey, <laughs> over this way. Oh. It's Dick. It's Dick Allen from Sioux Falls. Oh, no, no. They'll never hear you. Never in a million years. <laughs> Did you check our plane? Yeah. We're pulling out tomorrow morning at 0800. We'll be back at Matson in time for a late lunch. Oh, what a bust. Here we are, one last late night in Havana with nothing to do. Well, it wasn't so bad. We saw more of this country in a week than most people here see in a lifetime. No. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to order anything else? There's an American movie playing around the corner. Hey, hey, look, look. It's Senor Montaldo from the hotel. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, Senor. Over here, it's us. Rocco, Ron, how are you? Well, just fine, sir. Leaving tomorrow morning. What are you doing here in Havana? Well, my business, you know, to order the things for the hotel. Uh, did you ever find your young lady, senor? You know, she called the day after you left asking for you. What? Huh? The one we've been looking for? The same one? Well, the same. I think her name is Louis, is it not? Ah, now you see, didn't I tell you it was her? She had received a letter from your mother, senor Dick, saying that you were to be here and that since your paths were to cross, she was to look you up. She was a lovely girl, senor, as were her two traveling companions. Oh. All we had to do was stay where we were. Brother, what a wild goose chase we've been on. But they are still here, senores. What? Here in Havana? But of course we're at the same hotel, the Grand. Wait, where are you going? 
Senhores! 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 Ah, these Americans. But you know, they can be so full of business, too. I watched them when they talked of what they did in the Air Force, each with pride. The ground control approach man, the one who works in the office, the gunman, the gunner. That one, if he did not tell me otherwise, I would swear he has Castilian blood in his veins. Well, almost before I could move, they were around the corner already. And then, so help me, we looked in every town and hamlet on this whole island. Now, nah, don't exaggerate. There are a lot of towns and hamlets in Cuba. Every one, so help me. <laughs> I'm really flattered. Things were never like this back home. Oh, you just forgotten. Uh, don't you think we'd better be getting back to your friends? Well, they were doing very well without me last time I looked. Why do they keep insisting Sue and Kathy are from Sioux Falls? They're not, you know. Well, uh... <clears throat> That's just a little private joke, not worth explaining at all. Gee, shame you have to go back tomorrow. Well, it is and it isn't. Would have been a shame if we hadn't found you. You know, you were meant to be part and parcel of our honor oh, flight. Oh, poo. I think you just made up your mind that nothing would suffice unless it was a girl from home. Well, now, what's wrong with that? I expect the Air Force will take me many places before I'm through. And it'd be nice to always have a little bit of home with me. Like me? <laughs> I don't think the Air Force would approve. I think they'd approve very much. Well, I... I never thought I'd run into anything like this in Havana. Once again, you can thank the Air Force. They sent me here, and if I hadn't been here, I wouldn't have found you. I just hope you're not a single mind about everything as you are about the Air Force. <laughs> no, not everything. But in the Air Force, we know what we want, and we have the ambition, the energy, and in this case, the, uh... The incentive to follow a thing through. You see what I mean? Not quite, but here and now, it all sounds wonderful. Well, then I think our honor flight trip has been a huge success. Are you a service veteran? Well, if you are, then listen real carefully, because this message is just for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a gray that'll be a real pleasant surprise to you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage and at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. You write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special prior serviceman's folder. You'll see why. Today and tomorrow... You're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Air Force. And this is Dick Herbert speaking. Inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>